summer, when you think vacation, think National Lampoon's Vacation. See the real America. Hello, welcome to the Damien and Devlin Show. This is our review of National Lampoon's Vacation, the 1983 comedy directed by Harold Ramis, starring Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Randy Quaid, Emma Jean Coco, and Christy Brinkley, to name a few. That was quite a name, Emma Jean Coco? Yeah, she's a very famous comedian legend. Okay. She, was, she played uh, Aunt Edna. Okay. Anyhow, it's summer and I thought this would be a fun movie to show Damien. He had never seen the vacation movies. He's heard of them but uh, this is the first in the series and although Christmas Vacation has become more popular a lot of people forget that this was the big hit movie. Christmas Vacation when it hit theaters actually flopped. It wasn't very big at all. It was all those repeat viewings on TV that made it a big hit. So uh, I wanted him to see this because I like to watch this you know every couple of summers because it just gives me a warm feeling inside and it still cracks me up to this day because I was a little teen in theaters seeing this when it came out and this was the kind of stuff it, to me this was comic gold back then because you didn't see this kind of thing all the time so what was your first take on National Lampoon's Vacation? You know, I, I, I've seen little bits and pieces of this movie uh, over time I've never seen the whole thing I've never seen past the beginning I was telling him uh, recently a few weeks ago actually it was on TV and uh, during a break at work I was actually watching the first part of it where um, Chevy Chase's character is at the, the car sales lot uh, that's all I'd really seen of the movie and I was like, yeah, I don't really know anything about it And it just so happened that he's like, hey, why don't we watch uh, vacation? And then I was like, oh, you know, I'd seen it on TV, but yeah, I'll give it a shot It, it was funny like uh, I'll give it that it, it had its moments where I was laughing quite a bit. So uh, It has that there are a lot of actors in it that I had at least heard of uh, like I know Chevy Chase I know John Candy uh, but the other actors, like um, when her name came up, Christy, Christy or Christine? Chris, Christy Brinkley. Christy Brinkley. I was like, oh, but her name looks familiar. And then, of course, I knew, I um, can't remember his name right now, but he was in Breakfast Club as the head. Anthony Michael Hall. That's it. Anthony Michael Hall. I knew him. Obviously, of course, we've seen Breakfast Club. Shameless plug. But I've <laughs> seen it, and, you know, he was good in it, and he was pretty good in this, too. So the cast was pretty entertaining all throughout, and you know what? Hey, there was nudity in it, so that was good, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm always kind of the... Yeah, anyway. So for those of you who don't know what the movie's about, it's basically a comedy about a man, uh, Clark W. Griswold, who decides that since his kids are growing up and about ready to go into university and stuff, he decides to pack up... Hold on, wait, wait a second, university? Well, high school, yeah, university. Yeah, those kids are yeah, nowhere sorry, you know university. I mean. But you know, he's saying that they're growing up. So he decides that instead of flying to Wally World, which is their version of Disneyland, they were actually going to use Disneyland, but they thought there's just too much legal troubles, that he decides that they'll drive cross country to get there. And of course, mishap after mishap happens. But we're not just talking little things that happen to your family if you do this. They get everything happening. And this is pretty much what happens in all the vacation movies. And uh, that's the one thing I love about this movie. Now, Harold Ramis, if you know that name, I don't think he directed a lot of stuff, but a lot of people know he was an actor in SCTV. And of course, his biggest movie was he was one of the stars of the original Ghostbusters. And uh, he recently passed away. And I actually forgot that he directed this. And I'm sad that he didn't direct more. Maybe he did. I'll have to look. But I don't think he did. But I actually think this is a pretty solid effort. And it was actually written by John Hughes, who is the guy who wrote and directed The Breakfast Club. Uh, this was a short story that was seen in National Lampoon magazine, and they decided to turn it into a movie. And as I said, the only thing different was Disneyland turned into I had no idea National Wally Lampoon World. was a magazine. Yeah, National Lampoon was like a, uh, like a university 
comedy thing, kind of like okay. on YouTube now. If you watch The Onion now, it'd be similar, but it would be a gotcha. Thing. Okay, yeah. teaching you all these magazines, heavy metal, <laughs> yeah, Master I mean, Lampoon. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, you know, there's been several movies based on this. They went on a European vacation. They went to Vegas. Even the reboot is kind of. It's a sequel because it's Rusty with his kids when they get older and you get to see a lot of the characters again. So this has been a big financial series and I still think this is one of the best ones of the series. I know a lot of people like Christmas Vacation, but I always go back and forth. I think this one, for me, is still better than that one. Anyhow, your positives of vacation. So, uh, it was funny. Uh, and now, it wasn't completely funny like other movies that we've seen in the past, uh, like Airplane, where Airplane literally, that's like shock humor, and it was just genuinely funny. I would say that Vacation is a funny movie. Like, don't get me wrong, it was really funny at times. Um, uh, but I just don't think it hits the, the high notes as much as Airplane did, but it was still funny in its own regard. So I'm definitely giving that as a positive. Uh, like I said, the, the cast is pretty great, too, from Chevy Chase, who's always proven to be a really funny guy. Um, Christy Brinkley, she's hot. She's just hot. Like, <laughs> who wouldn't want her? And, like, I wasn't even around in the 80s, but she's still hot. I don't know if she looks that good in this day and age, but she's still hot. Um, the wife, I don't know her. Beverly D'Angelo. Beverly D'Angelo, also hot, also pretty entertaining. I, I liked her, like, um, what's his name? Craig? The main, the main character. Clark. 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 Yeah, yeah. And she's always like, Clark! And I, it made me laugh a few times. And she's basically the voice of reason of the movie. And it's funny, especially since Clark is such this happy-go-lucky guy. Uh, that's another thing, too. I really liked the character of Clark. <laughs> I, meant, I made a mention. I know I keep forgetting his name. Uh, I think actually somebody in the movie at one point misnames him as well. Claude. Yeah, they call yeah, him, so, yeah. yeah I was the ant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He calls him Claude. Yeah. And that's what threw me off. Is uh, he's a good guy. Like he's so positive and full of energy, and I, I, I just couldn't help but like the guy. Like when the worst things happen, he's still got a, like a we'll get through this and a positive attitude. And he's trying to find the positivity in it. Yeah. So that really endeared me to the character. Uh, Anthony Michael Hall as Rusty, the kid, I found him quite mature. Like, I found, like, he was the mature one of the whole family, and I liked that. Uh, the sister was kind of forgettable, but I'll get into my negatives with that one. But the, the aunt was hilarious because she's just your stereotypical, like, I'm a cranky old woman. Like, that, it was funny, it worked. And then just the situations they get into. So I guess this kind of ties into the plot. I liked the plot a lot. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the plot in my negatives, but overall, overall, I found the plot really, really, really enjoyable. Uh, the jokes worked for the majority of the time. Uh, yeah, it just works. Nice. Uh, now, usually if you've watched our, fil uh, our reviews, I usually always go to the director usually first, but I'm actually not. In this movie, I'm going to give it to Chevy Chase. Um, all the actors are really pretty good in this, you know like the main ones and stuff. And I'll give a shout out to one you missed that I think is worthy of it. But Chevy Chase is the heart of this series. Even some of the not so great ones like Vegas Vacation is not great. But the thing that makes it is the character Clark Griswold. He is, like you said, he's like an average man who always wants to just do the best for his family. Even when everything's falling apart, he tries to keep it. And yeah, he eventually has his breaking point, which makes the character even more human. <laughs> and I think he does well. And I think what they've done is with Beverly D'Angelo, they've paired him with a like a realistic wife. Like she's... She, she's very pretty, but she's like, she's solid. She's the rock of the family. You realize that if Clark was running the family, the family would have fallen apart by now. But she, and they work well together. And you can see a chemistry. Like, I don't feel it's forced. I feel these people have been married a long time. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you mentioned most of the other ones, but the one I wanted to give a shout out is Randy Quaid, who plays Cousin Eddie. Oh, good lord. Uh, he has a bigger part in Christmas Vacation, and I have to show you that one, because... If you like Clark being so lovable in that, he's really awesome in that. But Cousin Eddie is just, as much as I love the whole vacation, that sequence when they go off to Ellen's, uh, Beverly D'Angelo's cousins, is so frighteningly realistic. 
<laughs> and Eddie is just like everybody in their family has a relative like Eddie, where yeah. he's just always unemployed. He makes questionable life decisions, but does not ever blame himself. It's always the world or his wife or his family. Yeah, uh, yeah they go a little questionable, but we'll leave that to, I'm sure we'll be in your negatives. Um, and But there's a scene that I absolutely love where they're all sitting, all right after dinner, and they just, like, you hear the clock in the background. And I think all of us have visited family at some point. And, and it's just... Like, you just hear the clock in the background, just, like, waiting for the visit to be over, oh, or... On. I got a perfect way. This is the scene. Yeah. Don't say anything. Just just sit there silent. And then, of course, when conversation <laughs> does come, it's always complaining yeah. or asking for stuff. It's a beautiful thing. And that's where I'll give Harold Ramis a thing. I... He I give him more credit because he has little nuances. I, I like that he takes some time for some tender moments, but always slips a little bit of funny in there. He really captures nuances of driving in a car with your relatives. You know, you can relate to the parents, you can relate to the kids, you can relate to everybody in it. The little things where you're at a relatives and you're just. Yeah, it's fun for when you first meet them, and then you're like, oh, God, I want to be out of here. Yeah. And just even the breaking point, like, you know, yeah, they take it over the top, but I think all of us have wanted to break at some point on that. Uh, I think it's just a well-put-together movie. I think the script's pretty good. I agree. Airplane's a different style of humor. That's more rapid-fire comedy. This one actually takes time to let some emotions in. So, yeah. But I yeah. totally get what you're saying. Anyhow, that's pretty much my positives. Oh, and I like the song Holiday Road. It's cheesy as hell. They recently used it for a Twizzler ad, but I actually love it. And whenever I go traveling, I always try to slip it in my MP3 because it's just a great, you know, holiday road. The best part is if you listen to the end, there's dogs barking at the end of it. So there you go. How many songs can say that? Bar barking to <laughs> the beat. Who let the dogs out? Who? <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Get an extra shout out for me if you go to <laughs> like YouTube and listen to that song after you listen uh, to this review because you know you're dying to. I know you will be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, negative. the negatives. Holiday Road. <laughs> I found it really, really annoying. <laughs> really? Go I did. Yeah. What a perfect segue. They only play it about eight times. That's why. That. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, hey, one of my biggest negatives was the same song over and over and over again. Holiday Road. Oh. Oh. I must say that he wasn't complaining when Christy Brinkley was listening to the same okay, song. No, okay, no. She was great because I got something to look at and I tuned the music oh, out. Okay, it's kind of like going back to Rain Man where you were like so focused on oh, the action and all I could hear was the music. Switch roles. So, yeah, no, just the holiday road and then whatever song Christy Brinkley's character was literally addicted to listening to over and over yeah. and over again. Same song, yeah. Pointer Sisters, Little like, Boy. So that's a negative to me because it just was so annoying at times. Like, I get it. I get it. I know why they did that, but it still, it was annoying. Um, as I mentioned, some of the jokes were a little flat. They didn't really hit with me. Uh, maybe, maybe it's because it's an 80s movie, but I really don't think it's any of that kind of thing. It's just felt flat and that's fine like i said overall the movie's pretty funny but just some of the jokes felt flat uh, i want to talk about the sister so the sister character so forgettable like i forgot she was there half the time until they're like oh well, there she is and you'll be happy to know spoiler in all the movies they recast the kids and the ages are always different sorry go on in future, in future National Lampoons, that's going to be a negative of mine because I hate when they change the actors, but I get it for comedy effect, I guess. But is her name Audrey? It is Audrey. Yeah, I couldn't even remember what her name was. Like, I could kind of remember the other characters' names. Yeah, what was the boy's name? Rusty. Oh, wow, I'll give you that. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah you thought, you thought. I couldn't just find myself attached to her. Like, Rusty, I liked. I liked him a lot. And, like, just her. She was forgettable and throw away like i would have been fine if they had forgotten her at some point during the vacation just like oh yeah we had a daughter that would have been hilarious but yeah no her she was awful uh just uh there were a couple other things give me a moment to process it i know they're back there i'm gonna let you take the stage for now okay while i do this is a nostalgic favorite for mine so it was hard actually 
I was trying to think, I, when I put the DVD on and we we're ready to watch, I was getting my reviewer face on and said, concentrate, you got to find negatives in this. And I just got swept up in the thing and, and I, I forgot. But I do have one negative. I do think this movie could have been a little tighter. I think that they could have actually probably got a lot more jokes and stuff in. But I found that there were moments that they just kind of showed way too much and there was nothing really going on. I agree. They might have been doing that because of the travel aspect, but I still think you could have tightened this movie up a little bit. So well, I will get give... their obligatory eight Holiday Road songs. In there you go. Like so I think pacing in this movie, yeah, I'll give that as my only real negative. I'll give that to it. I did okay. remember. See? The plot's predictable. So I, I said, you this did. is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it happened. I'll but. give him that. He was, I don't know if he read the synopsis before <laughs> he watched not. this. I did not. I knew nothing there about this Is there an honest movie. trailer about this? No, no there is okay. not. Yeah, and you were predicting. We're just plugging a yeah. bunch of other yeah, channels. Yeah, I know. You were, you were predicting. I will give you that. Yeah, you were predicting I like, here, everything. Here I was almost like, I must have been naive when I watched yeah. this because I was like, oh, that happened? And he's yeah. like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, the plot was a little predictable, so that's another negative for me. And yeah, no, not a lot of negatives, honestly. Like, They're pretty easy to get over, but I do have to talk about them. Uh, some of the things I'm literally going to let go because of the sake of comedy. Like, uh, I'm not even going to bring it up because it's kind of a spoiler if it's, I do. Is it but, the cousin joke? The, well, no, that was okay. just more shock. I couldn't Yeah, you were. I love, I love when they tell a joke and I look over and he's got, like, his mouth wide open. Like, <laughs> they could get away with that in the 80s? That totally would not play today. No, no, no. Yeah, no. there's a little <laughs> joke about the cousin and his children that just... Leave it there. Yes. Uh, yeah, leave it there. Um, no, but what I'm more referring to is when they get to the theme park, I asked you a question. Okay, I was like, How yeah. is this happening? And you're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll let it Mr. Start. Logic yeah, has I'll to ruin my fun by like, what? <laughs> How, who's doing that? You know? But I'm like, it, enjoy it. Damien, relax. He's a movie. Let's have fun. Just watch <laughs> it. He still has to know the. Yeah. So, I, hey, I'm letting it go. I'm letting okay, it go. Okay, good. So, yeah. What do you give in this movie? Oh, wow. Um, we already there, and you're letting me go first. Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to give this movie a four and a half. Uh, mostly based on nostalgia, but I still think it's a pretty solid comedy. And I still absolutely enjoy this movie, and I still think I like it just a touch better than Christmas Vacation. But I think it's also because Vacation was the first one I saw. So I kind of knew what was coming up in the other movies because they do have different jokes, but they do follow a certain rhythm in all of them. All right. I thought long and hard about what I was going to give this movie. And I kept, it was one of those movies where I was like, I'm going to give it this. I'm going to give it this. I'm give it this. And so I'm going to take a, a, a nice, fair stance. I'm going to give it a three out of five. Mm -hmm. It was very funny. Uh, not all of it works. Some of the characters forgettable and, and just the overuse of the same song over and over again kind of brought it down for me. But overall, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And it's a great one to start the summer with. It, it's a lot of fun. Check out the sequels, though some of the sequels are hit and miss. Christmas Vacation is pretty funny. European has its moments. Vegas had not as many moments. And I actually liked the new one, but a lot of people didn't, so be wary on that one, too. And I will definitely show you Christmas Vacation for sure. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. But hey, before we go, if you hadn't heard the news yet, in July, it's going to be Fan Appreciation Month. So what does that mean? That means that you guys get to choose what we review. So give us your suggestions. Send it on comments here on YouTube. Give us to it on our Facebook page or even add us at Twitter. We want suggestions so that we can pick from a wide variety of movies. You know, things that maybe I haven't seen. Maybe he hasn't even seen them, even though that's really rare. But it, it exists. It happens. It exists. There's a lot. We want to know. What do you want us to see? and then get it out there so we can actually give a shout out to you like thank you so much for suggesting this you'll get a shout out in our video so keep that in mind his favorite thing the q a why don't you tell him about the q a we would also like to do uh questions and answers i don't use q a because i'm old school but anyhow just for any of our older fans who might know what's q a anyhow we want you to answer ask us questions whether it's about movies about our personal you know beliefs whatever you want to know about us 
ask it, and then we're going to do film a uh, a short where we're going to answer as many as we can. Absolutely. So yeah, just go for it. Go for it. We will answer pretty much anything unless it's really personal, <laughs> and then we'd have to charge money. <laughs> and you know what? It's going to be a good time. We're really excited for it. And so, other things coming down the pike too for yeah, July as well. Yeah, we'll we'll let you know as soon as we uh, get that video out. But thank you so much. For tuning in, as always, we love having you with us. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Let your friends know that, hey, these two weird dudes are having a fan appreciation month in July. And maybe their suggestion will get picked. You never know. We will see you next time. But thank you so much for joining us today. Have yourselves a wonderful vacation. This summer, when you think vacation, think National Lampoon's <laughs> Vacation. Better check under the hood. Smarty Moose, Smarty Moose, Smarty Moose. That's me. <laughs>